It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mag Tournament. I regret that I have to start this episode with a correction. I had not read the infantry rules. I just assumed they moved when... I just assumed the pilot moved when the rocket bot moved. That was a stupid assumption. They move after everyone else moves, and they have to stop when they go into woods. So I moved Bruzzy back over here so that he's not just dead in the water because of my mistake. Because if he was over here, he really couldn't. He could only go in one space in any direction for, you know, and, and it would be all over for him. And so we've changed that. Um, we've gone through the movement up through the spider bot. So now it's going to be time for our survivors to move. Then it will be the tank bot. And then the survivors will move. And then it will be the car bot. Poor Coonies. He made it here with the help of a walking stick. Got an event lose one, no, lose two steps water index. Now, he was going to go down one anyway, but going down, so that would have, that would have put him to, on his knees, so he wasn't able to move. Losing two steps, though, just made it so he instantly died. So I guess it's actually better. It's a quicker death for him. Um, I'm sorry to see him go. He was a, he was a really friendly guy. Um, a fun guy to be around. And think we're all worse off for having them to miss that. Goodbye, Coonies. And hello, Sackbutt. A bit of hubris has spurred the rocket car to charge. I think also just because they, the rocket car didn't want to be maneuvering around and doing all this dancing with the the hoverbot. And plus, the hoverbot seems weak. But now the hoverbot is going to attack with its... um. Rectenna here, which just disables things. And here we go. So it disables as a burst, and so that's going to be threes and fours. So the chemical rockets are disabled. Unfortunately for Tinkerbell and the recoilless rifle, did not disable the flamethrower. So see, that's Hoverbot, Spiderbot, can't shoot at Brezza. Brezza's trying to drive around before the spider bot gets out of the woods. Uh, he's got a tough, tough road ahead of him. Um, that brings us to Tank Bot. Tank Bot is going to paint, I think, going to paint the Hellabot with her targeting laser. And this time she was successful, unlike last time. Got to turn that down one. Um, Mark Painted. I think the Hellabot might have something with beam weapons. Let's see. Faraday Cage. If hit by a bolt or beam, remove one disable marker. She's not disabled. Or plus one power core energy. Can't really do that either. All right. All right. So that doesn't do anything. Uh, and then we have our flamethrower attack over here. And we'll go ahead and do that. So that's going to be 2d6 against... A silhouette of five. And that's not enough. So Tinkerbell dodged out of that one. I'm making another rule change to kind of speed things up. Uh, what I've been doing is having people wait at this um, base until they're all healed, but there's nothing bad that, that can happen to them there. So I think from now on, if you get to a base, you just get all fixed up. Other, since it's not a race game, time doesn't really matter. There's no reason they wouldn't just wait there every time. Uh, so we're just going to do that from here on out. So anyone who hits a base is just going to be fixed. And then we don't have to, I don't have to keep counting when they're at a base. Now when they're, like if they're on this space, they still have to wait because they roll for events every time they're there. I don't have them roll for events when they're on a base because I don't see any reason to. I don't think... Like, animals are going to go in the base or anything like that. They seem pretty sturdy to me. Speaking of events, they're really hurting Sackbutt. Um, he's so far lost two food and one water as a result of just events. And he got a little lost as well. So we'll see if he can even make it to this first base. I hope he can. Scoots had been trying to get to this base here, but she keeps getting lost and heading into the mountains. Maybe something about the spirit of the hills calls to her. So I think instead she's going to head down this way and try and get to this one. It's, you know. 
Big Spiegelman has followed his heart and entered the desert. Unfortunately, he got an event there that caused him to lose water. I think he got parched in the desert, and maybe he's tempting the forces that have been guarding him. But we'll see. Maybe he'll come out of it a stronger man. Let's hope for that. Robocar is ramming the heli or not the hoverbot. I was going to say helibot, but it's actually the hoverbot. Uh, we'll see how much damage it's done. Two, so again, Robocar is okay. And four and zero locations on the hoverbot are damaged. Four is the viral bayonet, and zero is going to bleed through to the drivetrain here. Sackbutt is doing a dance we've seen before. He got too weak in the woods heading to that base, and so he had to turn around hoping to hit this Ford. If he doesn't, um, he's toast on his next turn, losing seven life levels. It was really his only choice. Bummer for Bix Beetleman. He left the desert to enter the mountains in order to try to get to this base here, uh, but then he got an event that said he has to remain stationary for two turns. Uh, maybe he hurt his leg, or maybe he's having an experience, but that is going to really hurt him because in two turns he's going to be down to four. Yeah, he's going to be down a lot, and so that's going to make it so that he's probably not going to be able to move from this mountaintop for the rest of the game. We'll see. Scoots just got lucky. She rolled a random movement here. And, uh, fortunately for her, she got the one that let her move straight down and go back. Do, 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 do. Tinkerbell is trying again to use her viral bayonet on the robocar. Now, if this is successful, which isn't very likely, but she feels like she's got to get this to work. Um, if this is successful, the robocar, if it's not piloted, if that's not Hubba, is going to join her team. Um, not the player, just the, the robot. So whoever the player is would be out. Needs a five. That's not a five, it's a three. Spiderbot has caught up to Brezza. Hubba had a had a plan, a couple plans actually. First plan was he was going to um, bail out his civilian pilot and then use this nuke to blow up Brezza's robot what it, once he found out what it was. Uh, Brezza, he managed to get blown up pretty easily without that, so he didn't do that. Then he was going to um, use his own bot as bait bail out his pilot, and then when Brezza tried to take control of it, blow up the robot. Um, again, that wasn't really necessary. He just was able to catch up to him and shoot him with his Tesla gun, which Brezza can't defend against. The new movement rules made it so that Brezza doesn't move until after the robot's attack, and so that proved to be his undoing. Um, Brezza's going to go here, and we have a, a our French our French leg representative, and I can reveal who these others are. Shell is the Robocar, and um, up with people Jules is the Helibot. So now all is revealed. We're going to put Brezza right here. He is going on to Here I Stand, and Virgin Queen um, is the French leg, and probably it's going to be French and Virgin Queen as well. Dancing Bear is doing what she can. Uh, which is not much, but it is something and it could actually help. What she did was she used her uh, targeting laser on Hellabot again, which since Hellabot's already painted, it revealed all of Hellabot's stuff. Now, one interesting thing is the Faraday cage here. Um, it's actually helpful to, to Dancing Bear's team to know that because Faraday cage would uh, make the Hellabot immune to the Rectenna, essentially. It wouldn't be, you can't disable the Hellabot stuff because it has a cage around it. Um, so that's going to allow Tinkerbell to know what to actually use against up with people, Jules. Bix on the mountaintop, he can move next turn except he can't. Um, I rolled for an event, I got a six, which means yes there's an event. I rolled again, I got a five, which means it's personal. I rolled again hoping it would be a one or a two, and it would be that miracle we've been hoping for. But instead it was a six, so he lost another life level. He's in a rough way. Um, really, next turn is going to be his last, unless something else happens. And now is the time when we roll. Here's to hoping. 
Though, yeah, that's not going to do it. I think we can comfort ourselves in knowing that there's some, even though Bix is not going to continue in the tournament, maybe that's part of a plan. Maybe that's how it was supposed to be. Maybe wherever he goes when he's in that pile is where he's supposed to be. And now it's time for banana. English teacher to have a good looking live and gourmet cook. Her green thumb encourages conversation with plants. People who chew with their mouths open. Mark Twain, love many, trust few. Always learn to paddle your own canoe. My two daughters, shy, good student, honest, kind, conservative. Banana. Shell's robocar once again decides to ram the hoverbot. Three, so that's going to do one damage to Shell's zero location, which is not a big deal. And it's going to do three damage distributed among the hoverbot here. Hoverbot's their only chance right now, so let's hope Tinkerbell survives. I say that because the robo tank can't really hurt anyone unless it rams it as well, but ramming isn't really the best way to skin the cat. All right, so drivetrain, and then the two location bleeds forward into this. So this is gone, which is Nemo battery. Um, and then, what's the other one? Four. Four is the viral bayonet. I think it's over for these people. There's not a lot they can do. I mean, we'll play it out. But there's no, they don't have any damaging weapons, just a targeting laser and a rectenna. Cowboy's been cruising, he's almost to the end, but then he just got a remain stationary result on our wilderness encounter table. It was due to natural hazards, so maybe it was a sinkhole, his legs in a sinkhole for two days, and that's gonna, that's gonna impact him. So let's see, yeah, he'll, he'll probably still make it. Um, that's going to bring him down two levels to four. It's just going to take him a little longer, maybe. Just hope he doesn't get any more bad events. Not a lot happened in our firing phase. <laughs> He's got a bunch of people, or robots there. Robots are not people. Um, except for the flamethrower got disabled, and the car got painted. So the robocar got hit twice by things that don't really hurt the robocar. Though I guess it, it is going to help give this team a little bit longer to live without that flamethrower flaming around. Cowboy got another remain stationary result, this time on the personal table. So maybe he developed some sort of fear from whatever trapped his leg, the sinkhole, and is having a hard time leaving even after that's over. Um, the sinkhole's not over yet, but then he's also got his personal turn, his personal time to take here in the woods. Maybe he's having a hard time saying goodbye to the woods. I mean, this if he as soon as he leaves the woods, presumably that's going to be his last time there, right? Yeah. Sackbutt may not be out of this yet. He just dug down deep and found a, a, a bit of bohemian spirit to kind of feed his belly. He, he went back to his days of not having much food and used that to make it feel like he has more food. And so that's great. He's hanging out at the river, drinking up water, Trying to get his health back so he can try to get to this base here. Goots has made it to safety. I already drew the, the replacement card, and funnily enough, it was Red Tomato. Cowboy left the forest, but he felt so guilty in doing so that his depression caused him to lose a life level. The depression hit Cowboy again. Still, he's got, he's got enough speed to get off the board as long as he doesn't roll. Well, even if he, he's got... Yeah, I don't see any reason he wouldn't be able to get off. Let's think. If he rolls going the... Oh, I guess if he rolls the thing where he goes randomly and he goes back like this way, for example, his movement points would be over. Uh, or if he goes this way. But up or... Oh, or down. So, yeah. So there's a 1 in 6 chance that he, he has a random movement and then a 50% chance after that. Uh, cow, cow, cowboy ro ro rolled a 6. So that was pretty good. Uh, Cake walked it right out the door, and here we have Desi to take his place as our kind of yellowish green player. 
<sighs> Back to our cluster of robots. Um, Hellebot is going to shoot, I believe, at that tank bot there with her particle beam accelerator. And I can just call her Jules now. I don't have to call her Hellebot. Um, and she's just going to do a single shot. She doesn't want to blow it. Because you, you have to remember, there is going to be, you know, if this team wins, which presumably they are going to, it's going to be Shell versus Jules then. All right, so it's going to be 3d6. And that's going to be enough to damage something. Zero, two, or four. Um, not zero. Not four. What's two? I'll do two and bleed through to that guy right there. And now Shell is going to use her flamethrower, also on the tank, which is Dancing Bear. We don't have to call her the tank. That's a little insulting. Five, three, one. So that's going to hit, and there's going to be damage on the five, or the one and the three locations. One is the drivetrain, and three is the primary weapon, which bleeds through to this unmanned aerial vehicle. Um, I'm assuming the system got blown up, so this thing, which they haven't really been using for a while anyway, uh, just drops to the, crashes to the ground. Zagba is in a rough place, but once again his bohemian spirit fed him. He got food back in his belly uh, because of his past. Dancing Bear just got a ram in on the Hellebot, so let's go ahead and roll that right now. Five. Wow. I don't, I don't think that gets rolled again, but it's going to be five damage to the hell of it. I don't think Jules is going to make it. It's two, three, zero. Jun, jun. Yeah, that destroys her power core right there. All right, so Jules is out of it. Shell is left. No one can ram her. I think I'm going to call the game. Um, it was I wanted to see what would like what their state would be at the end. That was the main reason I wanted to play it out, even though I, these. These two didn't really have a chance of winning. Uh, they can't ram the Robocar because the Robocar is faster. They can't damage the Robocar because they don't have any damaging weapons. And so that is going to be it for the Kriegbot portion. Um, what's going to happen now is these four are going to continue as survivors, and then we're going to move to lost mode after they're done. And... Um, so the next person, I guess Banana's probably going to make it off pretty soon, and Sackbutt's going to die pretty soon. So the next two, their two replacements are going to be in lost mode, and I think in the lost scenario they start in the middle here somewhere. But that's going to have to wait until next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Um, Dancing Bear, Tinkerbell, and Jules, nice job all of you. Shell moves on. I thought Shell was going to for sure die because... Her main, she was just set up to ram people. That was her main thing. Um, but how things worked out, it went pretty well for her. I think her first two ramming rolls were only twos, and her third one was a three, and so that wasn't so bad. And she was, I think her slowness also helped her because she wasn't in the middle of the action. Uh, if you notice, the spider bot also did pretty well because he wasn't in the middle of the action, so it just kind of became... Shell dealing with the hoverbot that could have gone very differently. I, um, if the hoverbot uh, Tinkerbell had had rolled a five at all on on her many uh, viral bayonet attempts, uh, Shell would have been out of the game. Um, I mean that yeah, she was mainly just trying to disable people and then viral bayonet them, but she had to she she lacked a damaging weapon and that was a that was a problem I think for Tinkerbell. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. This is not my favorite game to play solitaire because of the hidden cars. I always forget who has what, and that makes it difficult for me. Uh, a lot of fun with other humans, though, and it's still fun solitaire as well. Um, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen, and that's always uh, that's that's what makes it interesting. But I feel like. I still feel like I have an input. So um, next video is going to be outdoor survival, um, but we're going to just essentially be continuing this game just in a new heading. See you next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.